Hello everybody and welcome back to this day in history. Our night we look back at a day in history and today we're looking at January the 9th and the first thing we're going to look at occurred on this day in 2007 in San Francisco, California and on that day Steve Jobs announced that that summer Apple would be launching iPhone and boy did it ever change the world. I don't believe that Steve Jobs knew the effect that this little device would have. It created a whole new category of phones. Uh, it really hastened the death of the CD. Uh, iPod was putting the CD on the road to death, but boy, the iPhone really made that demise quicker. Um, and another thing that just fascinates me is cameras. Ca digital cameras are still a thing, but it's mostly for professional photographers. The camera on the average iPhone is all most people need um, in reality. Um, it's the only camera I own. Um, it you can do so much on it. You can send email. Um, there's some people that that's the only computer they own. And it's all they need. Um, it converted me to an Apple fan. Um, it has made Apple the most... One of the most profitable com companies in the world. Um, it's valued at over a trillion dollars. Um, that is simply amazing. Um... It's just astounding all um, it has done. Of course, the apps that Apple has led the development of, you know, the iPhone led to the development of phone apps, uh, the App Store. Um, there has been privacy concerns because of the data that, you know, these apps capture. Um, it is causing a examination of a lot of things in big tech, uh, but on this day, after two and a half years of complete secrecy, Steve Jobs announced the first iPhone, and boy did it change the world. Uh, wow. On this day, in 1913, in Yorba Linda, California, the 37th president of the United States of America, Richard Nixon was born. Uh, Nixon served from 1969 until his resignation in August of 1974. Um, he was vice president at the age of 40 uh, from 1953 and 19, until 1961 under uh, President Eisenhower. Uh, with the exception of the Kennedy and Johnson administrations, from 1947 until his resignation um, in 74, Nixon was a force on the national stage and if not the largest, one of the largest. Um, he made a name for himself in the House on the House on American Activities Committee. Um, he ran a very vicious campaign for Senate in 1950 against Helen uh, Douglas, uh, who was a uh, congresswoman from California and a reported lover of Lyndon Johnson. Um, just a, a vicious campaign against uh, Miss Douglas, uh, who was a congresswoman, I said, from California. Um, he did have some big government ideals, though, surprisingly, when you look back on it. Um, the Environmental Protection Agency, um, the Clean Water Act. Um, he po proposed some health care reforms that really mirrored Obamacare. Um, and he opened China. Um, he supported 18-year-olds getting the right to vote um, and signed that amendment to the Constitution. It's not a usual thing for the President of the United States, surprisingly enough, to sign a constitutional amendment. So, um, 
and it's usually done by the recorder of the United States um, after the ratification by the states. So, uh, Richard Nixon, big government guy, born on this day in 1913. Deaths that have occurred on this day. In 1873, in Chislehurst, which is Kent in the United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom, Napoleon III died at 64. He was the first president of France, and later an emperor of France, and uh, really um, modernized French banking, and was instrumental. Um, in the construction of the Suez Canal. So, Napoleon III died on this day in 1873. Um, that's all for tonight. I'll see you back tomorrow night. And of course, on Saturday, we've got my State of the Race video where I'm going to discuss the 2020 uh, Democratic contest, how I see it at that moment. Um, uh, on Saturday. Um, really looking forward to that video. Um, and of course, I'll, later that day, I'll post that day in history. So, goodbye everybody. Have a good night.